Sometime last year, I created a video called Why I'm Ditching Ubuntu in Favor of Linux Mint. That video has now become the most popular video on my channel with a total view count of 153,700 views. It's 37 minutes long of me doing nothing other than rambling about why I'm shifting operating systems. And today I'm gonna to talk about some of the comments left on that video as well as what's happened since then. But to think that that video of, a, of, of me rambling for about three quarters of an hour would ever reach that many views has bamboozled me um, quite a lot. But, you know, life never fails to amaze us all. So, some of the comments. Well, a lot of people were wondering why it took me uh, 37 minutes to effectively discuss why I'm moving from one operating system to another when I could have discussed it in about three minutes. Well, basically, uh, it's because I was making that video for 500 subscribers, not the 5,000 subscribers I have today. And I knew those 500 subscribers a lot better. We were a lot more, um, well, first of all, the channel was a lot more unpolished. Um, and um, I knew that the people watching the video would be more interested in a long form video talking about something which um, is quite a dry subject to talk about. And I, I believe it got posted somewhere, maybe on Reddit or, or some forum or whatever, and it just kind of spiraled out of control from there. It also taught me a lot about how videos tend to accumulate their views as well. Uh, the video itself never reached many views until a couple of months after it, it had been uploaded, and then it suddenly started reaching thousands upon thousands of views. It seemed to snowball from then, and it's still getting views and comments today. So um, when people ask me why did it take me 37 minutes to get to the point, well, I didn't know 150,000 people were going to be we're going to be watching it so i you know if i knew it was going to be that basic bigger success i probably would have bit would have put a bit more polish onto it okay so uh, another question is one of the reasons um or one of the differences that people um mostly bring up when it comes to comparing ubuntu and Linux Mint are the difference uh, is the desktop environment that is used. The primary desktop environments for Linux Mint are uh, Mate or Mate, as it's supposedly pronounced, uh, and Cinnamon, uh, two um, layouts which are very similar to Windows Seven, I guess is, is what you compare it to. Uh, Mate isn't um, doesn't look like Windows Seven out of the box, but uh, Linux Mint have. have change the uh, the layout so that it does look very so it's so that it's more accommodating to to windows converts and ubuntu's primary uh, user interface is unity quite possibly the most controversial user interface known to man really uh, i really do not like unity i've tried it time and time and time again i've tried it for extended periods of time and there are a number of reasons why i don't like using it part of it is that it it, it doesn't feel responsive. Another part is that it, as far as I'm concerned, when you start putting um, task bars on the side of screens, you start um, infringing on screen real estate that you can't really afford to lose. Um, because obviously we have left to right, um, or English, which is my primary language, um, moves from left to right. Um, it makes sense to me to have left to right as as to 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 keep that as as free as possible and then when you're sort of encroaching on desktop space using taskbars the you know the top and the bottom are the ones where where you can most afford to lose space even you know that's one of the reasons why we shifted to a 16 by 9 um standard screen uh, aspect ratio is because wider screens um are just a better use of the space um so you know some people might feel that as a result of that extra width we can afford to put some taskbars there but um but not not for me. Uh, Joshua Chow, who's someone who I um, do a, work on a collab channel with, actually outlined it very well. Why he actually prefers he uses uh, Windows Seven, I think, off the, if, if I remember correctly, and he puts the taskbar. He actually adjusts it so that it is on the left hand side because he uses a laptop, and it's a lot easier to swipe left to get to your taskbar on a laptop than it is to swipe up or down. And I think that if you're using a tracker pad on a laptop, I think that that might be a, a significantly more um, more uh, it makes a lot more sense. Um, so anyway, in regards to the user interface, um, 
we can't deny that distributions are built around their desktop environment to one degree or another. That's why you have various different distributions, even within the Ubuntu family. You have Ubuntu, which has, of course, Unity. You have Zubuntu, which has the XFCE. You have Kubuntu, which is, uses KDE. Um, you have um, like Lubuntu, which uses LXDE. Then you have Ubuntu Mate and Ubuntu GNOME, which obviously use their respective uh, desktop environments. So there is a reason why it, it, some people, why a number of people feel that having a separate desktop environment warrants its own distribution. Now, if I was the person making the deciding say, I would put those options in an installer rather than have completely separate um, distributions just to make it a little bit easier so that you can have a more, you can have one website rather than having, you know, five or six. Um, but that being said though, to me, it does make sense to have a distribution built, built around the desktop environment. Let's say, for example, that I was using Ubuntu and then suddenly wanted to use a KDE desktop rather than using K, uh, Kubuntu, the KDE variant, I just installed the KDE desktop environment. I would have KDE and the apps and all the environmental stuff that comes along with it on top of all the Unity stuff. It would make the size of my distribution significantly larger than it needed to be. Um, it would mean that I would effectively have two of every kind of program, a KDE version and a, an Ubuntu version. So there would be a lot of bloat. And then if your follow-up question is, well, why don't you remove Unity? Well, in my experience, and as is a general recommendation among um, distributions, is that you shouldn't really start removing programs that come with a distribution because it can affect stability. And I found that um, find that out myself as well. So yes, just from a, that standpoint alone, it does make sense to choose your distribution to some degree based on, on, on your user, uh, you know, the, um, the desktop environment. That being said, some distribution, uh, some desktop environments can sit on top of other uh, distributions easier than others. LXDE is a prime example. You can put LXDE on top of Ubuntu or on top of a Linux Mint with very little uh, repercussions because LXDE is just such a lightweight desktop environment or as I believe it's moving to LXQT. Now I would put LXQT or I'd certainly be more inclined to put LXQT on top of a, a distribution that comes with KDE and I'd put LXDE on top of a distribution that would run uh, a GTK toolset. But um, that being said, with those things aside, um, the lighter the desktop environment, the more portable it is, I guess might be the, the term you'd use. But I wouldn't put something like KDE on top of a, um, a distribution that comes with GNOME. That to me would just cause far too much bloat, far far too much use, you know, like not even, not it's not even necessarily a disk space issue. My disk space can, can withstand numerous uh, installations of, of um, operating systems, as you guys know from my distribution demonstrations. But, um, uh, but it, 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 I think a part of it is feeling you're just wasting disk space, and a lot of it is that your menus just then become cluttered up with applications that you don't need. And I prefer to have, uh, uh, you know, applications that are own. I prefer to install applications that I'm g going to use and, and to, to, you know, it, uh, there, it's clutter. It's clutter basically, and it's not nice for 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 a user space, particularly towards uh, not just for users like myself, but also for. Um, New newcomers, you know, um, and I think with newcomers as well, you would very much expect them to use the default desktop environment. Um, so I'd certainly forgive um, any distribution that wanted to appeal to a mass market for using a, a very simplified version of a, a user interface like what Mint have done. They've made Mate look like uh, look, look like Windows Seven quite a lot. They haven't overdone it, but they've certainly given it. They've put put things in the place where Windows Seven users are likely to look. So there's a lot more to it than just, oh, well, why don't you just install another um, desktop environment? Well, because of bloat, because of uh, because I don't want to have two applications, two of every applications, um, stuffing up my menus and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if, uh, you know, and I like to keep my, my system as lean as possible. Um, that being said, though, that's to me inconsequential, especially now that Ubuntu Mate is, uh, is coming out. You have, um, you know, I can choose, you know, desktop environments across the board. I could use Ubuntu GNOME and then put Cinnamon on top of that, which would probably sit quite nicely. So it's certainly not about a UI, it's certainly not um, a question of, of user interface. There is another difference between uh, Linux Mint and Ubuntu, which is certainly more prevalent now than it used to be, and that's that Linux Mint base their distribution on Ubuntu long-term support releases as standard, but they have six-month um, upgrades 
but still based on the long-term support uh, release of Ubuntu that it's based on. I like this. It means it's stable, but it means that a lot of applications are also updated to their latest version. It's also um, worth bearing in mind that you're not necessarily stuck with out-of-date or sort of uh, software that isn't updated very often as a result of using a distribution that's only updated every two years because you can install of course PPAs and separate repositories that up upgrade software as new versions become available uh, and in fact that's almost essential if you want to run a full featured Linux operating system you're going to have to at some point install software that isn't in the repositories or as I'm sure we're going to end up referring to it the app store um, and certainly the Ubuntu repositories uh, are looking more and more like an app store by the day but um but by and large i don't necessarily have a problem with that canonical's got to fund itself somehow and i i think that as long as it pays home you know as long as it's true to open source values then um then i don't necessarily have a problem with that i know a lot i know there's a lot of debate to be had around whether or not canonical and ubuntu stay true to their open source values feel free to have it down in the description below but it's a, it's a complicated one um and uh in regards to philosophy as well, so sort of moving on from that nice little segue, I prefer the philosophy of Linux Mint to the philosophy of Ubuntu. The philosophy of Ubuntu is a very corporate one. I don't necessarily have a problem with um, that being the case. Canonical has done a lot for Linux. It's done a lot for GNU Linux in terms of it, the GNU user space as well. Um, but that being said, and certainly in terms of promoting it more than anything else, but that being said, it still does have a corporate mantra, whereas Linux Mint is very much a community-orientated one. Linux Mint is funded through advertise, uh, advertisements on its website as well as donations, um, whereas I guess Ubuntu is to a degree, um, but it's also funded from uh, making money through its app store slash repositories as well. Um, and, it, and it uses, uh, it sells licenses and, uh, as well to, um, to, to for redistribution and stuff like that, uh, which is one of the reasons why SteamOS decided to base its uh, uh, OS on Debian and not Ubuntu is because they'd rather just, uh, you know, develop the differences between Debian and Ubuntu and then not have to pay Canonical the license fees, which it's a savvy business move. You know, can't deny for that. Also, you know, Debian gives them a lot more freedom than Ubuntu will as well. But that aside, Linux Mint listens to its community a lot more than um, than Canonical. Canonical will listen to its marketing department and its um, in its analytic uh, analytics, whereas um, uh, and and it will also. Ubuntu will want you to use its operating system a certain way. Hence, why it's put in that Amazon. Um, commission search so whenever you there's a lot of controversy about um the amazon search feature in ubuntu effectively being many people have labeled it spyware um and whereas that's not a million miles from the truth especially considering that it's not as well publicized in maybe the installer as it should be um canonical does get a small amount of money every time that you do use that amazon search so it's a way of funding itself and to be honest if it was more open about it i would be more um more inclined to participate in that as well uh, or whether or not it was optional and you selected that option at the install level and again that then i'd be more inclined to participate in it but because they've almost tried to slip it in under the radar that's that's something that i would i would steer away from i'm not outraged or 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 angry about it it's just something that well i have an option not to engage so i'm not going to um, and Linux Mint wouldn't do that kind of thing. Um, in fact, well, actually, <laughs> tell a lie. They kind of do. Um, there are certain um, uh, search engines that do commission Linux Mint to use them. So Linux Mint does get some funding uh, every time you use certain browsers. But those browsers, at the same time, respect your privacy. I think DuckDuckGo could be one of them, but pl don't quote me on that one. Um, but it still allows Linux Mint to generate some kind of revenue without actually having to sacrifice any of its community values. And community values is why I do like Linux Mint. It does listen to the community. It asks the community questions. It engages with the community. Um, and many of the versions, many of the alternative versions, are directly from the community as well, the XFCE and the KDE versions, I think. So the idea that um, that it's just a UI thing is why I switch from Ubuntu to Mint is uh, is a complete fallacy. It's uh, mostly it's around a philosophy and community values um, ideals as well. 
I also like the idea that, well, if, if Ubuntu disappeared off the face of the earth tomorrow, Linux Mint, of course, would still remain because they do have a Debian edition. What I would like to see um, Linux Mint perhaps try and do is to base uh, a distribution on Debian stable. That being said, though, one of the big benefits of uh, Linux Mint being based on Ubuntu is that it's compatible with Ubuntu software. And when you see uh, very exciting new pieces of software like open broadcast software being brought out for Linux, um, which is uh, recording and screen cap software that the, you know we have not seen that level that professional grade um, soft multimedia software on Linux ever this is breaking new ground and to have to uh, go through a whole lot of trial and errors and tweaking and whatever try and get it working on a non Ubuntu operating system is, is likely to be very frustrating so the fact that it has uh, Linux Mint compatibility is something that that I I'm quite grateful for if, if I'm honest then again, there's no reason why they couldn't tweak it and turn Debian to, to become more like that. Uh, and I'm sure they've given it some thought. But um, but yeah, it is a community values. So that's why I, 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 by and large, am still on Linux Mint. I'm running Linux Mint 17.1, the KDE edition. I think maybe next time I um, either upgrade or decide to change um, desktop environments, you know, I might not necessarily stick with the KDE version, but I'm certainly going to stick with Linux Mint. It's unlikely that I'll go back to Ubuntu. Um, and also, again, another reason in terms of values as to why I did switch from Ubuntu to Mint um, and why I'm happy I made that switch is because Mint does put a higher value on, soft, uh, on system stability, uh, whereas Ubuntu often will edge towards the bleeding edge side of things. Um, I respect um, people that like to live on the bleeding edge. It's one of the reasons why I have so much respect for Arch uh, users, because they... Um, they, they do live on the bleeding edge. They they are they are not afraid to try out the newest versions of software um, and to to fix the problems that might arise. And I think that the wider Linux and wider GNU Linux community do owe them a lot in that regards. So um, I think that's about it from me today. I've, I obviously want to keep this video to a degree shorter than the 37 minute long one, but I'm going to of course annotate the original um, to allow people to. Um, to watch this as either a shorter version or as a, as a way of answering some of the questions in the comments section below. But that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments down in the comments section below. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.